majority. Second, that we're conducting cross-country administration. Uh, and uh, to develop global leadership, she has to recognize cultural influence on business practice. And um, even we have to think um, that we have everything is something different for the first day. We have to um, train the managers uh, by culture awareness. And uh, he has a feeling, and uh, by traveling, you will you know, experience the country. And yeah, and uh, then you have to see the business and the employees in an international way. Okay, so that was the uh, global leadership company. And then for your personal self, how you can acquire a global mindset, the first start with a quote, which is that uh, you have to go to. Uh, countries that have totally different way of thinking and totally different way of organization and totally different way of life, like mm. or shock to really be open to the open mindset. So open minds have to be not stuck in your own culture, but be aware that there are differences and embrace these differences in different cultures. And then um, you have to have the sensitivity towards different perspectives. You have to realize that everyone doesn't see the world the same way as you do. And also dealing with um, ambiguity might be sometimes hard to understand if you don't have the knowledge about the different cultures. So you have to realize that your way of thinking is not always the right and the only way. Also complexity. There's no fighting wrong because the difference in the world. Are so big. You also have to be uh, flexible, be able to adapt to different different cultures, different cult laws and regulations in different countries, and also be able to be uh, able to adapt to all different lifestyle. And also, communication is uh, important. You cannot experience the uh, global world if you can't communicate with it. So the technology. In some of the world's biggest languages, like English or Russian or Chinese, it's important in all the nonverbal communication to be able to interpret different, different uh, body languages, for example. And then, most importantly, cross cultural awareness, which sort of combines all these different things. And that was the. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your detail and a very good uh, description and explanation, okay? Wonderful. Thank you. Second. Second. For your first page, the PowerPoint, maybe you should list the, the selecting on the, the, the top uh, no, the top step, right? The first step, right? Yeah. First step is see that, right? I mean the sequence, how to list the, the step, right? Ready? Not yet? How about the third? Come on. Ready? Okay, please. Thank you. <laughs> here because I believe that a global mindset is important to be a global leader. Uh -huh. Global mindset means the ability to scan the world with a broad perspective, always looking for unexpected trends and opportunities. I'm going to kind of make this short because we have a lot of material. Um, and a global mindset combines an openness and awareness of our diversity, um, patterns across countries and markets. Without this, you will not be a successful leader. Um, we put in this graph. A global mindset includes intellectual capital, global savviness, cognitive complexity, uh, cosmopolitan, cosmopolitan outlook. Also, psychological capital, passion for diversity, quest for adventure, self-assuredness, diplomacy, 
interpersonal impact, empathy, and social capital. Without these things, you will not be a successful leader in the international environment. So we mentioned that. Um, what capabilities do Google global leaders need to acquire? They need to be, have an art articulate vision, values, strategy, a catalyst for strategic and cultural changes, empower others, results, and customer orientation, cross-cultural liter literate, open-mindedness, flexible, cultural sensitivity, resilient, resourceful, optimistic. Uh, this is one note that I wanted to talk about is another note to global leadership, the rise of women in the global um, leadership position. Women use broad-based power rather than hierarchical, hierarchical, you know. Uh, symbolized change in the community, the leverage and increased visibility in their capabilities. Um, I was reading a study about how women are becoming more and more in the leadership position and they're bringing new traits to international leadership. Here's a chart on global leadership dimensions. The dimensions of global leadership, cross-cultural relationship, relationship yeah. skills, traits and values, global business expertise, global or, uh, organizing ex, ex, expertise, uh -huh. uh, visioning, cognitive orientation. There are many different examples under each one of those, but I know we're running short on time, so I will keep going ahead. Mm -hmm. Educational and training. These are important to developing global leadership um, development. Mm. In regards to group, group collaboration, education is needed. Uh, which includes working with others in relationships um, characterized by community, flexibility, respect, um, trust, and mutual accountability. In regards to discovery, um, to me, discovery means global mindset. Um, education um, is important to help our students, especially, to understand discovery as transformational processes leading to new ways of seeing, acting, um, in turn, lead to the creation of new knowledge, actions, and things. Education and training in regards to architecting, the mindful design and uh, processes that align, balance, and synchronize organizational behavior. And education in regards to social behavior, um, intra-relationship intra -relationship among components and levels in complex system and anticipating consequences of changing in the system. Which, that's a long definition, and it just means teaching social behavior. And it goes back to the global mindset, teaching people how to get along with international communities, exactly what we're experiencing here in this school. Um, Ways to help leaders to think and act globally. Promote greater cultural intelligence among leadership ranks. Enhance the representation of different cultures at top organiza organizational levels. Enhance language skills in leadership roles to facilitate communication and increase productivity. Encourage foreign assignments for future leaders. Uh -huh. Greater understanding of local laws and business arrangements. Uh -huh. and yeah. Sorry I went fast, but we had a lot of stuff to um, cover, so thank you. Very good. Thank you. You could collect a, a lot of the information, huh? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And try to digest it. <laughs> yeah. Good three, yeah? Good. Mm. Okay, go. Uh, my phone, please. My phone. Yep. Basically, we feel that there's no one size fits all for this question because different com countries, their leaders have different competencies. For example, U.S. and uh, no, for example, China and India, their leaders are more competent on operational effectiveness, whereas for Western countries, their leaders are better in uh, visionary leadership. So, but this is just a main framework we can follow. Uh, companies can follow in uh, developing global leadership. Sometimes they have to identify the talents by having performance assessment, assessing the performance of different employees and identify who are the strong, stronger leaders, and then also through reference by like, supervisors to identify the talents. And then they can, after identifying the talents, they can assess the talents capabilities through personality assessment, individual competencies, and cultural assessment, so that they know that um, how tolerant each individual is to work. Uh, different cultural, uh, cultural differences so that they can be put in global projects. 
and then they can do a get analysis and identifying the needs of the individual. What we mean by this is to find out the weaknesses of the different islands and, build, and then train them to overcome these weaknesses. And after identifying their needs, we do a customized development approach whereby you can coach and then call the talents and put them in strategic job assignments and action learning so that they can reflect on their, uh, their, their strengths and weaknesses through actual job assignments yeah, and through actions. And then we do a measurement process in terms of the 360 degree feedback. So they get feedbacks from all the different people in their company, for example, their supervisors, their customers, uh, and even their peers. However, we, uh, we acknowledge that it's not, if, it's not enough to just, uh, it's not enough for just the organization to develop the talent. The talent themselves also need to identify the things that they can do to be developed. Acquire a global mindset uh, means thinking like a leader across borders and being able to influence people from all over the world. This entails uh, necessary skills and experiences for an individual to properly develop a global mindset. It includes managing cross-border relationships. Um, uh, concretely, it means like proactively learning the language and customs of other countries, but uh, one must also be able to harness uh, his cross-cultural communication skills uh, develop cultural sensitivity and get rid of personal biases and prejudice against other cultures. Uh, exposure to the international business landscape is also a good uh, way of acquiring global mindset. Uh, participating in meetings and taking opportunities to communicate with a diverse group of business leaders, it gives uh, a person, uh, it gives someone a personal account of how other people do it and through learning from them, they can also apply it to, uh, to themselves as well and the, the challenges that they may face in the future. Uh, also, exposure to different countries. It is good to be immersed in other culture, cultures by living somewhere that, uh, that where you are uh, unfamiliar with, frequently visiting and making new international friends, and also the development of a cosmopolitan outlook to be more open-mindedness and uh, be more open-minded and to uh, uh, be more adaptive. Um, one must also keep hip, hip, himself uh, updated with international media and current affairs. Uh, through this, uh, to, to propagate further a uh, greater worldview, exposure to international media and current affairs is a great aid because it helps a person practice critical thinking skills and analysis regarding these issues. Uh, awareness of global issues is a contributing factor to relating to other people from not just your home country but also from all over the world. Uh, one must also be able to constantly challenge the experiences and assumptions that one has, especially as this uh, helps develop flexibility and openness to change. And it is also good to find a mentor or buddy to uh, regularly share experiences with because um, uh, he can get different perspectives from different parts of the globe through uh, finding a member. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Yeah, yeah your suggestion very constructive huh? and concrete. The fourth? Yeah, please come up. Yeah. important factor that is to build a global mindset for every leaders. And the global leadership consists of three elements. One, one is education and experience and the attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, for the company, uh, the company mm. hire like, people who 
was educated in uh, international business programs such as our program. So they have some ideas about uh, how, uh, the, how to work internationally. And also the company can provide some um, leadership courses for the leaders, mm -hmm. like seminars or trainings. And then, or for experience, the company can send the leaders abroad, maybe for three months or something, to, to have the experience. Mm -hmm. And for the leaders itself, it has, it ha they have to be have the right attitude to face like working in the different countries or leaving their families. Mm -hmm. So they've got to have an open, they have to be open-minded, diligent, and patient. Yep. Because when they go abroad, they might have some obstacles. Mm -hmm. They have to deal with it slowly. And now we're going to tell you how can company assess the global leadership. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's very important to make some psychometrical tests to evaluate your workers, can they work globally or not. Mm -hmm. So we to pass them through a series of interviews. Maybe it should be once a year or well, one time for two years, it depends on your company, on the size of your company and of your global mindset. And you, you should provide 360 degree feedbacks, uh, which will help you to improve and play performance because it helps that to evaluate and see different perspectives of their performance. So each employee should uh, try to uh, assess themselves. And, uh, uh, next part, uh, we recommend you to organize collective management conferences. For example, once a year, you can uh, just uh, organize a conference by Skype. For example, if you work in China and in America, they can share their experience in hiring and firing. And uh, the final decision, you should coordinate worldwide, but execute locally. For example, hiring and promotions are the local responsibilities, but high potential prospects and assessments and some uh, methodology how to assess people is going and identified globally. Mm -hmm. I think that these uh, methods will help you to create a global mindset mm -hmm. and to educate your future leaders. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Huh? So you got this uh, from the p your paper, right? Mm -hmm. Good. I think that you have very good preparation huh, for the next uh, presentation. Yeah. The fifth. Yeah, right. Factors of global leadership, the most important are the leader's personal characteristics, his global and cultural perspective, and his organizational skills. These are the three most important factors. Basically, uh, in order to develop a global leadership, the leader should have experienced real life situation, he should have understand cultural biases, have a deep understanding of to develop a diversity policy, and have a diversity dimensions, have diversity competence and have the right diversity tools and you should be able to formulate the right diversity strategies. In order to develop a global leadership, you should have a, like, a personal global network, a sense of values and ideals, global business acumen, business communication and intercultural competence, language competence and cultural awareness. To summarize it, basically it consists of these three points. The ability to have a good communication, good leadership, and a great understanding of diversified culture. Yeah, very good framework, huh? Developing, developing global leadership. 
The first three have to describe the forces behind the globalization of business. This involves the three main most important ones. Technological innovations, understanding marketing trends, and of course, developing the right business strategy. And then, the second point. The leader should be able to manage his company in a global context. His thinking should not be so narrow. He should understand that the different parts of the world have different needs and adapt his strategy according to it. And then the third point. He should create a worldwide business scheme, but not only should he be able to create, he should be able to lead it, because just the creation is pointless. And he's able to lead a team with a diversified employee person from different parts of the world. He should, uh, he should have the right leadership ability to do it. And the final point is, he should adopt a functional global organizational structure, not like a, just a, like a single country organizational structure. He should adopt an organizational structure that's able to encompass a major difference from different parts of the world and have a right integration only with a global organizational structure can a company uh, perform properly. Otherwise, everything else just wouldn't work out. Mm, thank you. Mm. Mm. And we are studying the growth we have been more familiar with the different countries And uh, uh, if our students have some opportunities to intern in the company, they could get more practical skills. Uh, correspondent, uh, we think that students could be assumptions from different countries, and by doing with them, they could know more about their countries' cultures and also learn the modern language from them. Have some activity tests. Um, I think these tests, students could know more about the advantages and also the weakness. So after getting these tests, um, they could um, improve their abilities. Yeah, very practical, huh? Um, mm. and when we enter the workplace, um, we think the companies could offer the employees some promotion abroad if opportunities. So the employees. Okay, good, thank you. Yeah, I think you have very good discussion, huh? But still, yeah. Uh, more step need. Okay, go, please. Okay, you got all this from the discussion, huh? Mm, fine. Okay, good. Anna, huh? Mm. Everybody can hear you. Hi, uh, everybody. We are group four. Uh, we're going to present uh, our report. The first one. I'm thinking the first one. My friend going to do the second one. So, how can global leadership be developed? We divide it uh, into two parts: the human part and technology part. Uh -huh. part if the important is like we do, we present some kind of seminar and panels. Uh, and invited, for example, some guests coming from a variety of fields and branches, coming from a variety of world, to share their thoughts 
their knowledge and their experience to each other. So swimming is going to be a, an occasion for managers and leaders to meet together, to exchange their thoughts and their uh, and their experience in the variety of work. And the oldest part is uh, training courses. By training courses, it's like a broad concept. By training courses, we mean uh, offer a variety of language courses, a practical, maybe cross cultural training, conferences, and a variety of uh, training. And the third one is like job rotation. For example, someone working in Asia 10 years, maybe he could be a good leader, but he doesn't have any idea about how European market is. So maybe by job rotation, it's going to help him to open his mind and maybe understand better the, the way others, other country leaders think about the market. And the fourth one is like high diversity. For some a company we would like, for example, to open uh, to the globalization, need to, to hire a variety of managers, different backgrounds, different cultures, and to enlarge the, the knowledge and the diversity of uh, his company. And the fifth one is like compensation for improvement. By compensation, we mean that a, a company could set like uh, a competition. For example, if uh, you're working in Asia and you have like 20K per month, the company will say, okay, we're going to, to offer a, a, a position for someone going to work in the fr in France market or maybe Japan market. So it's like incentive to improve his salary. So uh, by organizing, uh, by setting that kind of plan, people, leaders will work and have incentive to, to open their mind to understand better the, the, the other countries' markets. And the second one's like the second part, technology. By technology, we mean that we could use a database and teleconferencing. By database, for example, we could have like uh, some feedbacks uh, to help each other understand the work and the thought for from all those uh, uh, companies. And I'm going to let my, my classmates present. Yeah, very good uh, classification, huh? Hi, I'm Michael, and I'm going to be talking about how does one acquire a global mindset. And a lot of the methods are also previously mentioned in how to develop a global leader. I'll share out some other ones. And the general one is what a company can do, such as have social networking and have people interact more with, with others from different cultures, different backgrounds. And also diversity working environments. The company should set up um, cross-cultural teams have people from different backgrounds work together so they can build a better understanding of your openness, open-mindedness, and also inspire more creativity. And that's, oh, another event is uh, the company just kind of uh, team building events, such as sport events, like company basketball games or something like that. And also cocktail parties, outdoor activities and field trips where people can go and have more exposure to different cultures and different people. And what people can do themselves on a personal level is to travel more, go on more vacation, or different business trips, go to different places, see more. And also reading, they should be more knowledgeable in the global areas, not just the local news. They should read news about global, global economy, global crisis right now. And also, in general, just have more conversations with people that are from more global places. Mm, yeah. And self-improvement, what you can do on a personal level is also learn new languages, yeah. just study more, go to, to take an MBA course and meet people from different different countries. Yeah, Very good, it. sir. So this this is the personal and the other I suggest the be interpersonal right interpersonal better than the general right use this uh, interpersonal okay the last That's maybe the more dedicated, huh? Hi, we are doing five. Uh, Michael, 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 please. Uh, 
push up. I'm not very used to use microphones, so okay. it's actually small. Mm. And, and Cecilia, this is Jay. We are talking about how can global leadership be developed? Uh, leadership in a company will be more diversified in terms of culture, gender, age, and nationality, and experiences. Which previous group might talk about this idea more frequently, so I'm just going to skip up. Well, yeah, our work uh, focus on the idea is like um, hiring local people and arranging business trip to leaders to exchange to, uh, to local market so they can really see the problem and they can figure out the solution. So we definitely, uh, uh, definitely enhance the ability of the leadership. And the global policy, like a spatial market, we are, we are talking about a global identity, like a, creating a value sort of company. Uh, we would like to give an example like IKEA. So here in a, in a whole world, no matter in Taiwan or in China or in Thailand, they have a blue, blue, brand and a yellow world. So it's very identified to customers. So, and like uh, and also the Chanel, the first brand. And here I'm going to present a, an example from IBM. As I mentioned, three key points about developing global uh, leadership. The first one is to grow locally and globally via a consistent methodology, which means a long business uh, business strategies with national priorities and social goals <laughs> and to uh, local entities and stand market relevance. The second one is to develop leadership, which means provide uh, more employees with opportunities to enhance their skills and offer more better uh, global experience earlier in their careers, like a travel around in different office. And the third one is enable the GIA's globally integrate enterprise vision. So, uh, which means to accelerate uh, enterprise by collaboration and an uh, organization cultural best on shared value. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Very good illustration, huh? IBM case. Uh, another case that I will illustrate for you is the DuPont, right? DuPont were select select the local talent and develop them become the global talent by means of uh, this uh, close boundary and close uh, discipline and close uh, function and close uh, uh, culture rotation okay by means of this uh, rotation they can get promoted uh, from this country to another country from this business to another business so yeah by means of this uh, global development process yeah, they can develop more and more global talent work for them across border, across uh, function, across business. Thank you. Thank you for that.